At the end of the presentation by the special coordinator of Ramsey, Mr. Nicholas Coppel, the premiers and the mayor of Honiara City Council were given the opportunity to ask some questions to the Ramsey special coordinator. Most of the questions asked by the premiers and the Honiara City Council mayor were around the issue of policing in Solomon Islands. You are raising one of the important points that uh, Ramsey will still be here uh, until after four years. Uh, I just want to know if there's any exit strategy that uh, that are already put in place for your exit uh, within after four years too. What we want to achieve is finishing the work in the RSIPF. So building it up to a point where we can scale back further Ramsey. Uh, for us to scale back further does require the RSIPF to be a, a stronger institution. But that's the goal. That's what we're here to achieve. If in four years' time we still need the same number of Ramsey police in the country as we do today, then we haven't really made much progress. So the goal is to reach the point where we can say we can transition the, the policing part of Ramsey into a normal um, policing assistance program. For example, um, Australia provides policing assistance to Vanuatu, to Papua New Guinea, but it's not done through a Ramsey type intervention, it's done through, through the uh, OSAID program. What we would like to achieve as a goal is that by the middle of 2017 we can say we've reached the same point as uh, say Vanuatu or Papua New Guinea, we will continue to provide support to policing, but it might be 10 or 12 key advisors in key positions, and maybe some financial support as well. But the police force is in a position where it can manage most of its activities by itself. In your view, uh, we know that uh, the government is trying to rearm some of the units in, his, uh, in the government force at the moment. Uh, what what do you what do you think? Uh, it's okay for the country, or it's still not okay for the country to for the for ourselves to have arms on certain units in the in the force. The decision on whether uh, the country should rearm the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force in certain elements is a decision for the government of the Solomon Islands. So I'm not uh, telling them what to do or what they should do, but what I have told the government is if they do make that decision, I will help them. The sort of help that will be required is not just giving guns or, or training. It's also about developing the governance frameworks, for example, building the armories. What are the processes that are put in place if a firearm is discharged by a police officer? What sort of inquiry takes place? Who conducts that inquiry? Is it independent or is it done within the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force? All these arrangements, all these questions really have to be decided first before one firearm is issued. But if the government um, makes that decision, we have said we will, we will help develop all of these um, uh, issues, these governance arrangements, we will help build armories and so on, help choose the most appropriate weapon. Um, but it is a decision for the government and it will also, I would think, require a lot of consultation throughout the country before a final decision is made. Um, but that too is a job for the government, it's not a job for Ramsey. The early discussions that have been, have, been have, had, I think, are not about rearming all the elements of the police force, but just a few officers. The ones that are maybe um, for say, the close personal protection unit for the Prime Minister. I mentioned the requirement for an armed presence at the airport. Um, and maybe that ultimate level of um, for the public disorder management. But I haven't heard anyone discussing the possibility of um, every police officer carrying a, a firearm. I think I don't, I'm not sure that um, there is an interest in doing that. What is the Ramsey opinion on the uh, current vacuum that we have in the police force? Two, I know that uh, Ramsey the military component they wind up the uh, program and also uh, with the uh, when they were in the provinces there is a lot of logistic support for the police force uh, 
with the boats, vehicles, and communication. Today, as Ramsey leaves the provinces, they are also living with the boats and removing the vehicles that they brought with them. Uh, what is Ramsey going to leave for these uh, police stations on the pro in, within the provinces? Uh, the question on the leadership, the, the current leadership of the police force, yeah, I mean, that too is a decision for the Solomon Islands government. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's an independent sovereign state. Ramsey can't interfere in decisions like that. There is the, currently a vacancy as the commissioner level. We have an acting commissioner and um, the uh, replacement for the permanent commissioner has been advertised and applications have closed. So I presume there's a committee meeting now or, or soon which will make a recommendation to the government. Uh, and, that, and that's obviously the most critical appointment, the commissioner of the Royal Salaam Islands Police Force. Ramsey will support whoever the government chooses as the commissioner. You know, we don't take sides or have opinions on who should be in that job. That is a decision of the government and we fully respect it. And we will work with whoever it is. The uh, question of logistical support, um, yes, we can provide f more. We have, I mentioned we had done some, but it's not um, uh, a job that's been completed. But what we are really trying to do is build up the ability of the RSIPF and the Ministry of um, Police, National Security and Correctional Services to be effective in getting money out of the budget. So it's all very well, you know, say we leave behind some boats and some vehicles. They may be working for a couple of years and then they break down and or they you know, reach the end of their life. What happens then? What we need is something that's more lasting, and that is to improve the management so that people can plan. We need a replacement program for vehicles. We need a maintenance program for vehicles. The RSIPF has to learn how to do these things. It has to work through the ministry to make sure that there is money every year in the budget, so that every year there is some growth and some replacement occurring. And then we have a sustainable improvement, improvement in the police force. So. It's not just about giving, it really is about building up that capacity so that the day that w we go, we have a force that can be strong and remain strong because it knows how to do that. And working within the bureaucracy, within the Ministry of Finance so that it can get the proper resources. And this is a challenge not just for policing but also of course for health and education. You think that the country was okay if you exceeded the country? You. Did you assure me that uh, you are going back to, to the withdrawal of the rams in the country? What is the guarantee for, for Solomon Island? One question here. To who is giving the decision to you to withdraw from the, from the country? Because I think give spaces to provinces to have a say, to contribute to that decision of whether you go out or stay in the country. Thank you. Two questions. The situation in the country is vastly improved, but of course, I mean, Solomon Islands remains a country of a lot of development challenges. And it's going to be difficult for the country for many years in, across the board, whether it be health, education, infrastructure, and, and also policing. But what's changed is that the militancy has come to an end. You know, that lawlessness that was, had overtaken the country has come to an end. And that's what's enabling changes. The country will still require and will still receive a very high level of assistance, but that assistance will be delivered through more normal channels, you know, through through AusAid, through the European Union, through, through from Japan, and and that will continue. So, when it might be said that it's okay for Ramsey to leave, that's not to say that the country is 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 fine and everything's working well, and you don't need any help from overseas. So some of the aid program that Ramsey has had has been in the Ministry of Finance and Treasury, for example. Ramsey will not be doing that after 30 June this year, but that program of assistance will be continued by AusAid through the, what they call the bilateral aid program. So it's not coming to an end. It's just shifting across. It's normalizing. So Ramsey is a very special, a very um, unusual form of intervention. 
um, we're at the point we're at now for those aid programs is that it can be normalized. And, and, um, and I don't have any, any doubts that that is the right thing to do. It also sends a very positive signal about the progress that the has been made in the country. If you look at for the way overseas investors and visitors might view the country, when you still have foreign soldiers on your soil, people are worried. There must be a problem here. Why are they all here still? So it's the image of the country will also be improved as we normalize. The key though is not to let go so much that things go backwards. And that's why we still need a large uh, development assistance program to be provided through AusAid and uh, other donors. In terms of the decision, the transition that Ramsey has gone through is um, uh, a decision which has been endorsed by the Solomon Islands Cabinet as the appropriate partner. Ramsey is a partnership with the Solomon Islands government and so it's through the, through the national government that we have our dealings. Uh, I understand it's appropriate for the provinces to, to have a relationship with the central government as well. But my dealing is with, primarily with the, with the central government, the national government. There seems to be continuous dissatisfaction among the communities of people in our, our villages regarding the um, non-responsive non or maybe very low level of response from the police uh, to attend to uh, some requests coming from communities um, asking the police to follow up with some maybe criminal activities going on in the communities. It's fairly common throughout the provinces that there's a level of dissatisfaction with um, the responsiveness of the RSIPF. Um, that's one of the reasons we're staying for another four years. We think there is more work to be done. Uh, and we'll be working with the RSIPF to improve their performance in the provinces. One of the keys to that is uh, improved logistical capabilities and transport in particular. I mean, provinces, I mean, like Isabel, you know, you really need boats to get from a police station to a community. So we need to provide more. It's not just about providing those assets, as I mentioned, it's also about ensuring there's a proper maintenance program and a replacement program so that they continue it's not just the gifting of new things all the time. Uh, and so we'll be working with that to ensure that you get more out of each of those assets. I think it's always going to be difficult for the police to respond to all of those situations. And we really need to strengthen um, the communities themselves and ha have more of these issues dealt with at the community level. And use the police force for dealing with major crimes. Ramsey's special coordinator, Nicholas Coppell, briefing the provincial premiers and the mayor of the Honiara City Council on the transition of Ramsey.